And, and I think this one, because it was sort of more grand, the other ones were more grounded in, in their field, but because it really was in the fantasy and you know, the space, and we got all, you know, there's all the archive material, the movies that were there, which was really exciting for us to sort of reanimate those things and those memories. But I think the specificity of, of his vision of that, and again, the animation is a very interesting thing in the mind, how it takes it, and I think thematically it works with the idea of memory and reality and, uh, and how that plays out in your life. Well, that, that, that comes from, from the script, from the structure of the script, I suppose, and that kind of, well, I suppose it's bookended to a certain extent, and it's a pretty large back bookend, but we're kind of starting out, and then, so the, that structure obviously came in the script, the, the sort of that amazing balancing act between the two, the real event and, and, and his journey there as well. I thought, you know, in animation, that would be even more wonderfully blurry. Yeah. You know, to me, it's memory, fantasy, history, cultural history. You know how cultural history really becomes our memories of films we watch, like of the Vietnam War. You know, it's not few people experience it by now, you know, but we all experience it on TV, it's all really kind of seen in um, the media. So it's part of, you know, the look, we have a whole different look to our TV. And there was so much TV in the movie that, again, that was pretty realistic to the time, sitting around watching TV. There was more, I cut out a lot. <laughs> I had like a whole section of Saturday morning cartoons, I had Houston wrestling, I had all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> but it is fun, we have a little animation. It's really fun to animate animation, you know, mm -hmm. and to like animate uh, pretty iconic imagery, Sound of Music 2001, yeah. to like reimagine those things. Yeah. But, that's kind of what we're doing in our minds anyways. We remember things. We're kind of doing these constructs. So if you think of 2001 now, you're, you're having to kind of remember something, which is kind of reanimating your mind. So I thought, oh, that's a nice place for the film to exist. I don't want to blow everybody's minds in, in that regard. Right. Um, yeah, when I first saw it, I thought, well, this is such a great structure and an excuse to get a story on the road for all these amazing memories that you have and your ability to do that. Um, so, obviously, you have access to the memories of your childhood and your family. You brought up the Cheetos with or the Fritos with the, you know, uh, chili and that kind of, those sorts of details. Um, but how, how much did you have to go to the well of research in terms of, because the funny thing is it actually fulfills itself as, um, uh, I guess, science fiction film in a way. You know, all that NASA stuff seems so genuinely authentic. It is. There's not a line from NASA that wasn't original. We got to all the transcripts, all the transmissions, every image. You know, NASA is very generous. They're, they're by far my favorite government agency. You can make get footage and make films. They don't care. It's public domain. You pay for it. You're a taxpayer. <laughs> and uh, you know, I pay for the footage. It's really great. But, uh, yeah, all that is, you might recognize a lot of that footage, you know, we just animated uh, a lot of it, so, um, yeah, just all, all that, but yeah, you did several years of deep dive research for that and all the TV stuff, and it's not like I remembered all that, like I said earlier, I remember the, the kid perspective, but the more adult, rational thing we were doing required a lot of right, research, yeah. Where, where, where were you when it happened? On the couch. Yeah, and I, I, true to form, I think I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was there. But no, we had gone to Extra World that day. It was a tough end. We were just really tired by evening. It was late. And no, I remember it really well. <laughs> Do you remember it was funny. you were telling I was one. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, um, 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 where should I go next? Um, uh, so, just explain for everybody, and me again, even though I know this, it still kind of surprises me every time, um, the, the process that you go through. Because there are credits that we see here that we don't really normally see in an animated film, and I think it's how it results in such a great performances, such sort of emotional performances that you find that normally get in an animated film. 
So I suppose I'm going back to casting and kind of, and, and the basic simple steps to how it's just to like any other film. You know, you cast, you, I rehearse a lot, and, you know, we form this family, and we just, you know, we shot it in 20 days on a, in a green screen environment, which was kind of um, a little mind numbing after about three days. <laughs> you're just like, oh, we're here, you know, most location shoots every day you're in a new location, or maybe a week. Something I like cannot that. see you on green. Yeah, I was like, what am I doing here, a Marvel movie or something? <laughs> Every shot in the movie is, is a special effect, you know, with the little round mirror ball kind of thing. It's like, oh gosh, and we were pre-visiting it on the um, side. But the, the cool thing is, it was all like make-believe. You didn't really, I mean, like we're at a drive-in or something. Right. And we're not at a drive-in, we're on a green screen, but we already have it all like here were the cars and we could look on the screen and say, you know, you map it all out on the floor and even the hallways in the house, it's okay, that's, oh, you just walk into the wall, you gotta oh, walk. So there's yeah, yeah, there isn't even a, a hallway. No. There, is there a station wagon? We had to have a station wagon. Okay. <laughs> Anything they're interacting with is real. Any prop, any car, yeah, that kind of stuff's real. So you can shoot pretty efficiently and it's a 20 day shoot. So, uh, and it's fun. It's kind of like I said, make believe, but you can shoot a lot of takes, whatever you got, you got to do. The kids have a lot of fun with that. But then, um, then you you edit it like a regular movie, except what you're looking at is a green screen with performances, and then as the animation starts showing up, you know, you start dropping in the backgrounds. And, right. And um, but we really don't start animating until we lock picture. And by that point, I have all the voice, all Jack's voiceover, and all the um, music and right everything. right so going to that so you're talking about a section that you cut out so you're judging off of the green screen or a little bit of background yeah the, the, the overall movement of the story right yeah right. You, yeah it's kind of tough you're, you're the movie's a little longer but it, it looks crappy you know it's just you have to imagine what it's going to be we might have a still of or some really bad looking home movie you know, a lot of the textures were really mournful, they were like home movies. And, right. Um, so then, a lot, then of archi- a lot of bad archival stuff that we could kind of clean up and make, right. make vibrant in animation. So, but then where do you, um, so but then when stuff starts to come back to you, you're used to a performance of a real person's face, which I imagine you must become very attached to at a certain point. Yeah. When does that, how does the interaction happen between the two of you and, and, and this team that you have? where something is either lost in translation or how do you navigate the waters of, of you know, bringing the performance to life? Well, you know, I've got, you know, I, I couldn't wait for them to be in. You know, they, they you know, just, they just know that's what they're going for. We've done a lot of, uh, spending time doing the design, so we kind of know what you're going for with each character. And we're trying to do as much, much as we can with as little as, as possible. Right. In a way, so but that how many weeks in like a year and whatever? Yeah, and he's, over. During the pandemic, we're just on the oh really on the computer every day, just you know. And at that point, I'm just going yes, no. That baseball wouldn't bounce that way, you know. I'm just kind of orchestrating like and explaining to a lot of people in Amsterdam like you need baseball. <laughs> 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 yeah. I have no idea what a lot of this stuff is. And then I'm the old guy in the room. I'm trying to explain. No, this is you know like everybody's the generation. Where do we from? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> so I'm trying to obsessively get every detail right. Right. And it's, it's, but it's it's really it was fun and it was a fun film to work on. During a miserable time in our, in our lives you know, during the whole pandemic. So we were very lucky. We wrapped the live action shoot about three days before. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. Wow. And we had, you know, I think, do you remember? We had six weeks of prep. You know, this thing really seems so elaborate. But I told my production designer, Bruce Curtis, I said, good news, bad news. Bad, bad news is we started shooting in six weeks. And we're just, you know, starting now. Mm-hmm. Like, wouldn't it be crazy for a real movie? I said, the good news is we don't have to really build anything. We just have to design it all. <laughs> and so we just needed it to be you know, easier. So we worked, but thank God we, we, we were getting kicked out of our green screen. Certain dates in the bathroom, and I said, it, it was great. And I said, yes, and 
we went. We were very fortunate. I think with your question about performance and Rick, I think that you know because it's based on live action performance, you have to honor that. And the whole goal is if you don't capture that and elevate it in some way, then why would you elevate it at all? So really the, the time and the effort was really put into that character animation and, and it's really like eighty percent of it's right here. You know, it's all in the eyes. I I one of the moments I noticed most was um the, the just not just that his eyes were red coming out of the pool, it was the exact right red. You know, like, at that time, it was like, my, made my eyes sting. And that kind of put me into just how hard that kind of thing might be to get right. That's the kind of thing that you could get hung up on forever trying to get right. But yeah, yeah like every part of that's trying to, I, I go back to the shooting of it. We just had a green screen the whole thing, like, come up like you're coming out of the pool and your eyes are stinging. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd ever experienced that in life. Man. Wow, well, I thought about this movie completely differently. I kind of imagined you out in a pool and shooting it and having to erase stuff and then just sort of, I, I guess. I thought we were going to do something. But at the end of the day, we didn't get back what we had to shoot the pool and have this. like, screw it, we'll just do it all. Even when he's getting pulled from the undertow, yeah. we had him on a little like, <laughs> pulley and kind of jerk it back. <laughs> I mean, because a movie like this is, this is a, a real movie. <laughs> it's, I, you know, um, I mean, that's like what a hundred million dollar movie. Yeah, I think it's about eighty, 80, 80 to a hundred. Which I don't think I would have gotten. No one's watching. My family sitting there watching TV. <laughs> 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 or a trip to the moon. Um, yeah, I, don't, I would have never gotten too far with that anyway. Yeah. So, well, how did you practical find, though? How did you find your boy? Oh, the guy's it's terrific. Was, I mean, they all are. All yeah, all the four young, youngest siblings had never been in a movie before. The older siblings had, and the parents are, you know, they're, they're like professional actors. But the kids, we just kind of put out a pretty open call for the kids to come in and probably had the most fun call back. And, History because they we just had games and bikes, and you know, kids were playing kickball, and they didn't really forgot they were being evaluated because I was saying, Do you have kids, bro? Right? Yeah. 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 I was just eliminating kids left and right. There were all people who had given good auditions, but it was kind of seeing how they did. So you were like the little league coach throwing, yeah, the yeah, I was the guy. What I liked about Rose is you didn't really know how it goes between him and a couple other kids who were technically probably even better actors, but they were, I just liked his unflappability. As the kids started disappearing, other kids were realizing, oh, this is his final callback, you know? Right. And he didn't care. <laughs> and I said, that's what I wanted. Don't you, we all hate like the two cute kids who were too solicitous and adult, you know? Yeah. You know, response and everything. So he just didn't really care much, you know. So I, I really like that. I knew the guy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he, was, he was like that the whole way. He never, he never, it, you know, I never even told him, you know, this whole movie rides on <laughs> your <laughs> old nine year old self. But uh, I never, you know, he was just truly on fire with my foot. He had that quality and he was a smart kid and he was just a good enough athlete, you know. He was, just good enough for all that stuff. So, I don't know, kind of leap of faith, but I'm just a great kid. He's already grown about that much. And, uh, right now. <laughs> so did you have to tell him about, the, uh, how, did, how did you enter him into this world? Um, you know, rotary, here's a rotary, this is a rotary. Yeah. This is a, it, with all, we have props and in rehearsals, in rehearsals. And also, you know, kids say that someone can't even ride bikes or, you know, their parents won't let them get out of their sight, so you can't ride a bike in the neighborhood or, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, just getting the skill set that would be required to look natural doing some of the stuff, uh, repairing a bike tire, changing a tire, all that kind of crap. It was yeah. just kind of fun, but it was 
that's when I felt like, oh yeah, there's a generation or two that's going on here. Yeah, I mean, my experience with kids, the hand, handball, handball rules and kickball rules have changed dramatically. You don't really <laughs> see that much kickball anymore. No, I know, which is a shame. Um, it was a great, well, but even the transition I showed in the very first scene, that, that you couldn't throw the ball at the kids anymore. Yeah, so you might hurt somebody. Damn, that was the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and in the same sense. <laughs> but uh, I, I think. Mr. St. George, our coach, who did have that sadistic put your nose in a thing. He's probably still alive somewhere. I'm hoping he sees the movie. He gives me a call. Were you using the real names from your memory? Are you mean, able to do you that? No, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> 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 I've learned to, like, you know, switch it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just do a calculation. You go, eh, you know, other times you're so <laughs> Well, let's talk about that actually. This is if NASA is your favorite government agency, who's your least favorite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, legal clearances. How does the Walt Disney fund everything? <laughs> nice that you mentioned that, you know? There's this thing, in, speaking of legal clearance, called uh, fair use. That if you're actually talking about something, maybe culturally critiquing it or satirizing it, uh, law says you can kind of use it. So we, we got on that pretty early. Tinkerbell flying off. Can we uh, do that? And then, yeah, we had a good, good lawyer came back. Yeah. Can we do that? Can we use 2001? Yeah. Since you're talking about it, we didn't have to. I hope there's no copyright holders. <laughs> Right. Well, you guys do that with uh, some songs too. That little montage where you call the songs that are named after girls in yeah. class. Uh, we didn't clear most of those. <laughs> but we did clear the Johnny Cash because we used it a little differently. But uh, yeah, it's amazing what you can uh, get away with if you want. <laughs> like, you know, we should do a whole movie with songs that you're either talking about or you can just fill a whole movie with use. <laughs> This is my, usually that's just the killer, right? You're Absolutely. making a movie, it's like, you can't use that, or if you do, it's a quarter of a million dollars. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is like, I, don't, I like a little payback of 30 years of just getting killed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, we did pretty well. Well, it's, it's what the movie depends on, it's all the details. They have yeah. to do commitment to all the details, and once you hear one thing, you have to hear all the rest, and all these memories just keep cascading for any of us alive anywhere near that. So, so, so Tommy, are you, do you, do you run day to day, once he's shot, he sits and waits for you to keep coming, feed stuff back? How does, how does, the, how does the collaboration work? on the set, you know, we're, yeah. he would even come over to me, I'm doing a camera move, he goes, can you do that camera move? That'll cost us about an extra month. <laughs> can you do that? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of weird because there's a design process. We actually started after we, we filmed the reference part of it, which usually you do all that beforehand. But once it was sort of put through and everybody kind of understood what the story was, because it's, it, the story is a different story than most films, right? So when you go and script to that, it, it, it sort of changed its meaning. And so we were able to really construct the animation and the look around the story in a very profound way. Right? Um, and then it starts out very slow, sort of background style frames, things like that, and then it just starts to, you know, it becomes a machine and it just builds up. So we're starting out very slowly, but then after a couple of months, it's just a machine. Right. You know, and then it's just a lot of moving parts, you know. Like I, I was going to be specific. So slow moving parts. Yeah, the, the grand vision of it. Right. But it was, it was a fun collaboration. We just talked about how textures and colors, how colorful the hero was. Saturday morning cartoons. And, and, also, reference. and also, like, how do we, you know, like Galveston, the first thing that Rick said was, like, that's too pretty. You know, so then we had to decide, like, well, what is it? It's memories. We're not really representing Galveston as it is, but we're representing Galveston as we thought it was when we were kids. Right. Yeah, so it's a little heightened. Right. A lot of that. So I think color palette. 
So what was the biggest challenge then, in terms of a, a, a sequence or a scene or something that just became, inevitably in the film, there's that one thing that you banging your head against the wall. It was like a Frito pie that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was like the frozen the ice on yeah. the bologna yeah. sandwich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, God, that does not look, that looks like mold. Yeah. It's not ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just sending it back. I was that picky uh, patron sending back their food. Yeah. 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 I just did that. Well, you got it right because it really did Mars. look like that. Yeah. Just that right texture of the like, food. Food was the hardest thing. Food. Yeah. yeah, food was tough. I love food. And uh, Jello and some yeah. 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 Good to jiggle right in Jello. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Al Nice Lady Ride though, that's cool. I thought that was easier than I thought it was going to be. It's like forever. Yeah, the tunnels. We have less reference for that. Yeah. Is Astro World still there? Still no, no. Another. That does put us to 100 million to recreate Astro World. <laughs> no, they tore it down. It crosses the freeway from the Astro Dome. That's Barely still standing, um, but yeah, no, it's it's long gone. So conjuring up the world that really doesn't exist anymore. Long gone. And when did you? Um, clearly, you know, when obviously when you were writing the script, voiceover was going to be a strong part of it. Yeah. And when it was like sitting down and being told, I don't use voiceover that much. No, you don't I really it. haven't. But this felt like oh, sit back and get told to take. Yeah. You know, you know that first section of Goodfellas where he's just, I said, what if you did the whole movie like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it really works. I figured I could get away with it. Well, when you're as funny writer as you are, you can get away with it. Jack yeah. Black is a great yeah. person to say those words. I think he can kind of make things feel like it's coming out of his head. Funny, and he just has that great spirit to it. Yeah, he was, he was so fun to work with on this. He's just the best. Yeah. So, yeah, I felt, that's what we felt like we were getting ready. I <laughs> felt a lot of things. Um, are you doing other ones? Any film? Uh, we always say no. We <laughs> say no. <laughs> then years go by, and there'll be a film like, oh, it doesn't work live action. Like, maybe it's, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Right. You know, it's nothing, nothing, nothing immediate. Definitely takes some recovery time. <laughs> um, I know we're starting to run out of time, but there's a couple more questions I want to ask. Um, number one is, how do you sleep at night knowing that the Astros are cheated in the woods? <laughs> <laughs>
And that triple feature is a real triple feature, isn't it? The countdown. Yeah, absolutely. That's the Altman countdown, right? Really Altman. Yeah. Like, with Robert Altman. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Altman before he was Altman. Absolutely. Yeah. It's TV Altman. <laughs> yeah, it was like the last Altman film. film. Yeah, and I didn't know that for years. I remember those three films. And that was 68, actually. And then um, years later, I guess when I became kind of the most film letter and I was looking through all the oh, countdown. I remember that. Yeah. So anyway, it was kind of a fun little shout It's out. such a good triple bill. So, uh, countdown. What's the second one with the Nazi? Frozen Dead. Frozen <laughs> Dead. <laughs> and It. It. Uh, yeah. Riding a Town. And, and none of these films are seen, you know, so it's funny how in your mind, like some of the obscure TV shows, you don't really know what's going to end up a classic. I mean, but Planet of the Apes and 2001 were playing at the same time, yeah. you know? And in, in the, everything's pretty exact, you know, like those four films were playing in the drive-in. Right. Yeah, at that night, you know, that Janis Joplin on TV, if you look at your you got yeah. a TV guy, that's what's on, that Beverly Hillbillies, that was that day, you know. Yeah. Well Susan, is it Susan Sontag? Uh, who's, who's, uh, no, Gloria it's Steinem. Uh, Gloria Steinem, yeah. that's right. Gloria Steinem, who's the guy, who's the uh, uh, messenger? Uh, Ira Messenger, or right. he's another radical, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta hand it to him. Uh, TV back then, the TV production of that, they had all kinds of, they had great science fiction writers, they had other astronauts, it was quite a production. They invited on these dissident voices, people who, who were against the program. That's what surprised me as an adult looking, kind of informing myself about it more. It was like, you know, they had uh, Kurt Vonnegut was on. I did I tried to get him and I had to cut him, but he's just shitting all over the whole program. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I forgot it. I didn't pick this up as an eight-year-old, but hippies and kind of counterculture people thought it was a waste of cash. It was kind of this militaristic, crew-cutted guy thing that felt very nationalistic, and it was, you know, pretty Cold War exercise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's I'm not to be cynical, but you know, the optimism. I think everybody had the sci-fi writer mindset that oh, we were going to be on Mars, and you know, all that. We didn't figure that someone would quit writing the checks. You know, and that was the government after we kind of won that Cold War exercise. You know, when we landed on the moon, the Russians, we didn't know this, but they were, they were orbiting the moon. They were probably a month or two away from landing on it. So we won that, that skirmish in a big way. And it, that was it. It just didn't, you know, no more. I think it's all coming now, but it sounds like we'll be at, you know, on the moon again in a couple of years. But uh, you, didn't, you don't think it's going to stop, you know, that that will be the high water mark. So it's only as years go by, it becomes a bigger achievement. You know, this great, you know, greatest human engineering feat. Uh, but, you know, it's 50 some odd years ago. You, know, you always think it's going to get better, but you never know it's, when it goes away. You know. It's like that championship the team wins. <laughs> oh, we're going to win next year. And then you don't win for 50 years, and they become it becomes a bigger deal. <laughs> That's my sports analogy. <laughs> but uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the best writer. On